dreams and the unconscious. Dreams are such a powerful tool for unburying what has been blocked from us throughout all of time. And so when some people hear the word, <clears throat> excuse me, the word unconscious, they often don't want anything to do with it. And then there are the mystics and those who love the mystery and who really want to wake up and be entirely conscious, then they're hungry for it. But the unconscious dipping in is like, opening a love letter. It's like receiving a great gift for something that has been unconsciously steering, motivating, preventing, blocking, obscuring. You know, it's, it's how we remain in shadow. And you can't like, I mean, eventually you have to own our, we own our shadows, but without looking at our unconsciousness, we don't really we might be clueless. And that's why sometimes when somebody says something to us, it feels like, what are they talking about? Because we're not perhaps aware of a particular behavior that another person has become aware of. And it's not easy to receive that news. So I wanna tell you more about dreams. I have a workshop coming up very soon for six weeks where we can really dive into dreams together in a supportive container to be able to learn all the different ways that dreams can guide you, can support your creativity, can empower you, can unleash energy. Uh, there's just so much that can happen, but there are some prerequisites you could say first to kind of dispel the myth that the unconscious is scary. I mean, it's kind of like the way that a person might perceive a snake. Some people will see a snake, me included, out in the jungle. And I'm uh, at first glance, I'm gonna be afraid. But then I might discover what kind of snake it is. And so in a dream, the image of a snake, it, it's dreams are symbols are always metaphors for something else that is being represented as perhaps an aspect of our life or something from the day or some kind of message that is trying to come through to us. So for some people, a snake might represent shedding, you know, letting something, you know, a, a layer coming off like an onion, shedding the skin so that something else can be seen, something deeper. So the surface is, is uh, melting. So that could be the idea of a snake for one person. And another one could be um, related to the early Genesis story with Eve, you know, and the apple and there'd be some unpacking to happen there. And then a snake for somebody else could just be something that's really scary. Maybe they had an experience one time in their life where they were bit by a snake. So it can be biting. And then there's, uh, oh, there's so much imagery around snakes. It's a powerful image. I think it's, it's in medicine that it's the snake that um, circles up the staff and represents healing you know, this universal symbol for healing, which in the early days when medicine first came around, this is really what it was for. So I'm gonna offer this workshop and let you in on different ways in which you can find creative solutions to your problems in your dreams. You can identify areas where you may feel blocked or stuck, and you can highlight unhelpful patterns that have been repeating and rather than shaming or making them wrong, you can just see them for what they are and then be able to befriend and integrate. And then it can point you to ways to step, in, step into a greater version of yourself, a vision of yourself, and inspire your creativity and provide a luminous spiritual path. Ancestors speak to us through our dreams. The more that we connect to our dreams and pay attention to them and honor them, they do the same with us. It's like the dream maker is, is waking up to our awareness of being interested in the unconscious, in the dreams. And it's almost like a bridge is formed between consciousness and unconsciousness. And then we're in this relationship with the dream world and it becomes very exciting. It's like 
as a prerequisite, I was going to say, I talked about this before, to really be able to remember dreams. You know, you can set up intentions, rituals before going to sleep, but also the quality of our sleep matters. So another aspect of being afraid of the unconscious, which you wouldn't anticipate, is that often people don't want to stop and rest. Like we are a culture that is conditioned to push to not take a rest. So in order to sleep well, we also have to rest well throughout the day, take moments for resting socially, mentally, emotionally, creatively, physically, all the different ways where we can take rest and feel the nourishment that comes with doing nothing. And wow, that is so counterintuitive, not to our real body intuitive sense, but to our culture. So looking and seeing into unconsciousness means pausing, resting, sleeping deep, and letting um, information come to you that you don't see with the physical eyes and phys hear with the physical ears. It's not out here in our ordinary awareness that really brings us into a whole different realm of experience and understanding altogether. Now, isn't that exciting? So I'm Prajna O'Hara and this is my channel. I would love for you to subscribe and leave comments if you like. But more than that, come on over to my website, prajnohair.com, and check out the course that I have coming. I believe it's starting next Wednesday, and there are um, some spaces open, and I would love to have you there. And it's my first time offering this as a group kind of journey. So if it is full or you miss it, you can always come to my website and see when the next one will be offered. Have a beautiful day. Rest well, sleep well, and enjoy your dreams. See what they have to offer you. Bye for now.